Welcome back, Commanders. Steve here, Command Center Wargaming. All right, brother Marines, I finally did it. I finally got the pre-shading tutorial done, brothers. And it's super pretty sweet. So, for those of you who haven't been following along or are just new to the channel, uh, here is the Bolt Action Panther. Panzer V in all its glory. All right, so check that out. This is a full pre-shading tutorial. Keep in mind, it's a very small vehicle. All right. So I'll put some better pictures up there in the turntable now. Awesome. All right, everybody. So yeah, look, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Any questions or comments, just ask me. If you want to see more painting tutorials and all that kind of stuff for me, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any requests, let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, so guys, remember the 600 subscriber draw this Sunday, Australian Sunday, Australian time. I'll be doing it through the day. I don't know exactly what time. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to queue up the next one. I've got a speed painting, batch painting, Primaris Marines tutorial I want to do as well. All right? All right, guys. Fantastic. See you in there. Steve out. Yo everybody, alright, so in this tutorial video, I'm going to be doing a little bit, Steve from Command Center Wargaming, sorry guys, in this in this tutorial video, uh, we're going to be doing some pre-shading, now I have this bolt action panther here, which is pretty cool, now it's not a bad size model, it's certainly a fantastic model for, uh, for the kind of kit that it is, however, for a mini wargaming kit, for a tabletop kit, However, pre-shading does work better on bigger models, but you know, we got to do them on here too And this model is certainly no slouch in size. It's really good size. Like I was saying in the other video um, I'm very 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 happy with the size of these bolt action models and the cost and everything and the detail is really pretty reasonable as well um, So of course they're never gonna be as awesome as the, you know as the proper tank kits and that, but they're still really good. So anyway, so the first thing that we want to do is just clean the model up a little bit, just give it a brush off. All right, I've already done that. Give it a blow. All right, so just basically uh, so that like you get any residual dust and all that kind of stuff on it. Now I'm going to be starting off with some Mig, sir, uh, sorry not Mig, Vallejo Negro Black Surface Primer. All right. Now, this is not, uh, this is separate to the Negro Gloss Black, which is what I use to paint the, uh, the gloss surfaces and that. You can't see anything anyway, because I use it as a little stand for my mini. So, but, uh, but that's what that is. But, uh, yeah, it's separate to that. So this is just a matte black. All right, so it's just a really cool matte black that I'm going to use. Um, and then I'm going to be using... MIG white one shot primer, okay, and then I'm going to be mixing the two together to create my in between, um, you know, sort of like in my in, in the middle tone there, the gray tone on the grain scale. Now, I've already got this pre mixed in here in this little bottle. Um, this is basically a uh, it's just a pot, like it's an old sort of uh, Levea for medium pot from 
Games Workshop, which I've emptied out, I've used, and I've just done a little bit of a pre-mix of the two paints in here. Um, and there's a little, probably a little bit of Games Workshop in there as well. It's a bit of a mix of everything, but anyway, the the color, the color is what it is, and um, and it's and it's correct. So you know, I know because I've already used it on the night, and the rest we can put into the application. Uh, you know through our airbrush skills and stuff like that so yeah but um you can use whatever tones you want whatever paints you want i recommend if it's the first time doing this guys i recommend just having a bit of a practice first uh because uh because it can take a little bit of practice to get this going okay now also as well just a bit of a disclaimer my white balance is a bit off on this camera i keep forgetting it to fix it up but uh this tank is actually a lot lighter than what it appears in real life uh, in real life, it's it's a lot darker tone, right? I've also gone through and I've kept the turret separate, of course. Right? And I've also kept the chassis separate. I've actually kept this in a few different parts. And the reason is is because it's a lot it's a lot easier for pre-shading um, when you're doing that. And it is it is an extremely important step extremely extremely important step um, to go through when you're pre-shading to do all that so I've kept everything pretty separate makes it a lot easier to, to be more thorough these grills are separate as well so I've got a little bit of glue tack there which isn't gonna kill me uh, also these these parts here so I've gone through I've, I've kept the model separate uh, because I can and Hang on a second, I've just got to take this part off. It looks like it's just stuck a little bit. There we go. All right, so, yeah, so basically all these separate parts here, and I'm going to go through, I'm going to pre-shade all them. Uh, then I'm going to go through, and I will keep these tracks... Oh, uh, actually, yeah, I'll need to keep these tracks separate because, because the wheels will be sort of camouflaged, and the tracks will be sort of like silver and rust and all this kind of cool stuff but I just really need to see how we go as we go uh, as I was putting the model together I, I did notice that it's less important with these smaller kits to keep the tracks separate from the wheels um, because there isn't that much detail in there anyway and it's actually quite easy to go in there and, and sort of get around that uh, whereas the big the bigger sort of like tiger kits and fine scale modeling kits from what I'm coming from is actually um, you know the wheels turn so it can be a little bit finicky to get in there and do that but uh, with this it doesn't seem to be like a massive problem so all right so the first step that we need to do is we need to go through we need to actually base coat the model itself uh, in its entirety okay so for that I'm just gonna use this Negro black as I said before okay and uh, you know nothing to see here special guys it's pretty much just the airbrushing technique uh, if you want a more detailed breakdown just head on over to the um, the undercoating tutorial of the Hydra uh, Hydra Elite Hydra Elite Hydra Legion and uh, I forgot to put in I forgot to put in my thinner in the brush but that's all right this is just undercoating guys so I'm gonna just pump this through uh, just get the get it out there yeah it's a very nice black this is Vallejo Negro black absolutely fantastic uh, absolutely fantastic black this one so I'm just trying to flush this out of my airbrush because I don't want it to clog uh, make sure you always shake it of course as always I sh shook it up a fair bit uh, I don't want to use this airbrush cleaner I want to use this thinner all right, so basically just go through, just put a dab of paint in there. Well, actually, I'll put a little bit more because, yeah, last thing you want um, is the airbrush to clog when you're doing this. It's kind of like, you know, you go through, you you spend the time doing all this to get like a really, really nice consistency and finish, and then you find out that your brush clogs, and then you're like, oh, geez, you know, like that sucks. So. Um, yeah, just be careful of that one. These primers are really good, but they, they do need a little bit of thinning sometimes. Um, and it's it's undercoating. So, you know, undercoating and pre-shading uh, in this situation is actually probably the most important step of the whole model. 
because this will determine the detail um, of the whole model. So I'm just going through and just putting a little bit more thinner in there, just to thin it out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go through. I'm going to give it a stir with the brush that I had somewhere here, my little, my little stirring brush. So the first step is just to give it a little bit of a stir like that. Push it in. Right. Okay, so give it a nice mix there, just push it right in. All right, give it a nice mix like that. Okay, and then next thing we'll do is just hold over here, hold the, hold the airbrush in the nozzle tip and just very slowly just back feed it just a little bit. Be very careful, especially if you're doing this tight inside because it tends to spit everywhere, as you can see. All right, so that's just what it does. Um, so I'm just gonna clear my hand off a little bit, so. All right, so that should be fine though. Yeah, that's a lot better now. So again, I'm just going through, just airbrushing it. Just going through, just doing streaks of the model, just streaking the model, all right? Here I just went ballistic because we don't have to worry about that because no one's going to see it. Um, but on here, just going through, just streaking the model. All right, just ever so slowly because, you know, we want to we want to preserve as much of that awesome detail on here as we can. It, it, and it's already, it's already black, like grey black, so it's not really going to matter too much. Um, you know, if we sort of like go a little bit dark with it because it should be dark and this is the first step anyway and then we're going to go through and we're going to have a look at uh, you know the best way to go so what way to go we, we could choose to do the white first uh, we could choose to do the the gray first it all depends really on the model um, now here we could have even done we could have even primed it in white I'm sort of getting in my own way here aren't I so I'm just gonna put this over you can even you can even prime the model white and then just go through and re work in reverse. It's uh, there's no real rule to it. It's pretty much just what you think looks the best. The most important part is uh, is just to make sure you put your your strokes down with your airbrush on at a good distance at a thin layer. All right, as to not get built up and to make sure that you preserve that detail on the model. Now, especially with a with a small model like this, uh, you de you, it's even more important that you keep those fine details in there. Uh, because with a larger model, like a little bit of clunking up isn't going to matter too much. But with a small model like this, yeah, you really you really got to make sure that you are. Uh, you keep the details in there, all right? And you don't have to, as I said, you don't have to go too heavy with this either, because it's uh, it's already grey or blacky grey, which is awesome. All right, so we're also going to go over this with a wash as well. All right, and then what we have to do, we have to turn the model around. If it jams up, just spray it like out of the range of the model. Yeah, never, never continue spraying on it if it jams up. All right, never, never do that because you'll risk just flooding the model with with bad. And you can also give it like little taps as well. If you're, um, I'm not going to open this window. It's, I'm going to need to open that. It's getting way too misty in here with fumes. So. Um, yeah, just go through, just strokes, strokes, people. All right, and then once this is done, we'll go through and uh, and turn it around. Now, the thing is that uh, <clears throat> it's all right if we sort of manhandle this model a little bit because it's not a space marine. Um, we can actually go through it. It doesn't matter if we get a few finger marks and stuff. I mean, look, we, we want to avoid it, but it's not as critical because it's a rough model anyway. If this was a, like, the model's got, like, a rough surface. If this was, like, a kit, um, like a, like a 1 to 56 scale or, 
or whatever, I would actually go over this with putty anyway and add like more of a cement sort of uh, section to it. So I'll just go through getting as, as much as that as I can up the back there. I just to be careful that I don't wreck my other models because of the mist. That's all right. And, uh, and I'll just come in from the top now. All right, get that going. And that should be good for now. I'll let that dry up and then, uh, and then I'll flip it around and we'll do the underside, which is less important. But uh, that's that's really nice. And why I like these Vallejo paints the best, uh, these primers the best, and the MIG, is that they're just so smooth. Like, if you have a look at that surface, you know, it's just so smooth. And especially the MIG ones, they actually go through. They're very thin. They actually hug and wrap around the model as well. So as I've explained in other videos. So, yeah, it's really, really cool. So, really nice finish now. We'll leave this to dry for about maybe... Look, absolute minimum one hour, two hours. But, you know, in the case of this tutorial, because it's a rough model, I'll just leave it for about two, three hours. But honestly, you should probably leave it for about a day just to be safe. Uh, let it dry, let the paint sort of like get into those crevices there and, um, and that. And then we'll come back and then we're gonna go start doing the other layers. All right, we're gonna do the, the mix. We're gonna start doing the gradient and stuff like that. And uh, I'll take you through some, uh, a little bit of lighting theory as well, miniature lighting shading theory, and so you can understand. There's actually a, there's actually a few different ways of lighting and shading miniatures. There's like realistic ways and 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 sort of like you know more sort of cosmetic ways and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, shading that that works well with edge highlighting if you're going to do it. Shading that doesn't. Um, my way is always just what looks the most realistic. And uh, I actually think I might have been served a little bit better here to start off with the mid-tone and then work my way up and down. But it's okay, that's just what happens. Uh, it's probably gonna be a lot more thorough doing this anyway. Uh, you know, I might have to do an extra step, but that's fine as long as the model looks good in the end. All right, so cool. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll stop the camera, go off and do a meeting or something and uh, come back to it and, uh, and we'll, we'll continue this, all right? In the same video, of course. All right, everybody, fantastic. I am back <laughs> like half a day later. Oh my goodness, all right, so uh, yeah, so look, uh, you might notice a little bit of change in lighting and stuff like that in the room here. Uh, it's because it's like about, I don't know, like half a day later or something, um, but it still should be fine. Uh, I might actually just add a little bit more light to this shot. Hang on a second, because, yeah, but, uh, so basically what happened is, is I, <laughs> I, I, I literally, I, I just had to, there we go, that's probably a little bit better. Um, I literally just had to go through, just do a meeting, uh, and then I went to come back, and then I had to go, had to go to the, uh, had to go take the fiance to a wedding expo, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna come back and, and finish this video, and then, um, then I get a call from the associate professor from MIT offering me a job, and uh, I'm as a lecturer there, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, and I'm just like, that's fantastic news. But I had to update some stuff on the CV and everything, so, you know, it's all good. Uh, you know, the, um, the times of, uh, you know, what, what, what would be awesome is if uh, I was one of those no-job YouTubers that just basically sat there and, uh, you know, just did YouTube for a living on welfare, on the dole or whatever or something, but uh, unfortunately that's not the case, so... Thank you very much to everybody for your patience and everything there. Uh, I am a very, very busy, busy person outside of the YouTube space. So thank you for your, your tolerance and your understanding there, but uh, all good. So we just gotta, we just gotta work with what we've got, you know? Oh, shivers. That was an explosion. Where did that all go? Hmm. All right, doesn't look like it. You did much damage, so that's okay. All right, so let's just give this a bit of a test spray here. It looks like I might have a blockage because, as I said, I had to run over, basically just stop this video before. There we go. All right, now nah, I'm good. 
So I just had to tighten up the, the front nozzle a little bit more. Alright, that's basically all that was. So, yeah. So, alright, so what we're going to do here, you can see here we've got this awesome, really awesome, uh, you know, uh, panther coming along. I'm really happy with the undercoat so far, but now we have to do the bottom, like the other side of things. Uh, so, I'm just going to flip these around. Now, my plan is, as I'm, as I'm undercoating the bottom of this panther, my plan is I'm then going to go and do the 500 subscriber draw. And then I'm going to go have dinner, and by the time that comes back, uh, then I'm going to go through and try to do the pre-shading then. But I can't really do the pre-shading until, like, you know, this this uh, undercoat has been achieved. All right, so all good. But we're going to do that. So you know what? We don't need we don't need all of this stuff in here. So I'm just going to take this all out of my little bay. I have to be very very careful as well with stuff like the uh, antennas and stuff. I have a feeling they're going to break off eventually anyway. Um, but you know. Until that day, I'll like to keep them as intact as I can. So, now you can see here, it's, it's actually a really, really good mix uh, of paint here that I've mixed up. So, it's going really on really, really well. And uh, we don't have to be perfect here because most of this is going to be painted over anyway. All right. Uh, and it's really good for you know getting in those cracks and things like that as well. So yeah, it just it just has to be enough to sort of cover it up. The back the back is pretty important. All right, uh, maybe we'll just do it in here just a little bit, and then like on the on the side here just a little bit as well. All right, just in case there's any overhang. Uh, and then I'll just come out to the bottom. It's, as I said, it's not really gonna matter here, guys. So I'm not, I'm not being too particular with it because nobody's actually gonna see it. Uh, you can see here, it's probably like a little bit thick here. That's an example of what happens if you don't do your airbrushing properly uh, and you get a really thick sort of like layer on top. As I was saying, no one cares because it's on the bottom. Nobody's ever going to see it. Um, but like, I'm going to be a little bit more careful up on this part, obviously, which I am. All right, so yeah, but just just to show you what's going on. So I believe in uh, I believe I believe in like. So I don't mind doing a few mistakes here and there because it means that you can learn from my mistakes. So all right now, I'm just going to do these wheels. So the inside of the wheels, no one gives a crap. But uh, this this back side of the wheels is very important because we're going to be seeing that. Uh, it's not so much the bottom, but especially like just here is going to be very important. All right, and uh, and just I guess up the top here. Now we're lucky with these models because they don't actually move. The wheels don't move. If this was a, another Tiger kit, uh, that would be super critical, but it's not. I may even be able to get away with not doing the back of that, which I probably would, but I'll give it a flush anyway. Just just for, uh, you know, just for, uh, just to be thorough, so cool. All right, so I'm just gonna give this one another one shot across here. All right, fantastic. And then this one, another one shot across here. No, right, I really should be holding this down, but it's just very hard for me to get in here with the camera coming across, so. And as I said, it's the undercoat. It's, it's not really a concern right now. The main objective here is just to keep everything, like keep the detail in the model as much as we can all right that's really that that's really about all we really give a crap at the moment here with this all right we just want to make sure that we keep the detail and because because the model um is has a base uh plastic coat of like gray really dark gray it's fantastic because we don't have to go too crazy with stuff um 
you know, if we if we miss a bit here and there, it's it's not going to it's not going to destroy us, right? It's not the not the end of time. Okay, so yeah, so awesome. It's looking pretty good, I think. This bottom section can use a little bit more love. Looks like I'm out of paint, so I'm always going to put in just a little bit of a little bit of mixture here. All right, so yeah, mix that around a little bit, keep it going, just flush it through. I don't want too much in there. Yeah, that's about right. A little bit more of Negro Black from Vallejo. Okay. Just give that give that a little bit of a stir. Okay. I'm just gonna go through now, back flush it. There we go. Just make sure I don't get too much all over myself. Flush it through. Give it a few taps because because the new paint will probably get stuck a little bit. There we go, that's looking better. Okay, and then the bottom of the turret, which is very important. You gotta be very careful, just be careful with these little parts. Uh, I'd say they're probably gonna stuff up later anyway, but why make it more than what I have to? Again, down the bottom doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit thicker because, you know, no one's going to see it anyway. Be mindful around the sides there. A few more little strokes around the back here. So just watch that detail, guys. Got some really nice free Zeramite detail there, so we want to sort of keep that as much as we can. Just get the tip of the turret, inside the turret. The rest can be done by hand, not a drama. All right, so that's that part done. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's undercoating really well. Um, this will just move over here. This part, I can't remember, I, I've done the top. So I'm just gonna flip this over. We don't really have to do this back part, but I will because again, like you just never know if there's a bit like hanging out or something. Um, you know, we're here, I've got the paint, so the important part is just to sort of like get around the sides there, just so there's any bleeding. Just to just to fix any bleed that comes through. All right, so now we've got the paint, may as well use it. All right, so there we go, and uh, and that that'll do for that. I, I can just lay that back down. As I said, I'm not. It's not going to kill me if uh, if that goes through and, uh, and 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 chips a bit off the back there. It's not a problem at all. All right, so it's all looking really good. Uh, I'm just going to flick these around. These parts do the back of these parts. The paint should be dry enough now. And again, it's as I said, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if we muck the texture up a bit, the uh, the tank should be a little bit rough anyway. Just gonna go through there, just get the back of that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It's just we're just undercoating, keep that detail. Um, you know, we're gonna be going over this a few times anyway. Okay, just gonna get a bit of extra one on the top there, a bit more in there, because I've got just a tiny little bit of paint left, so I don't believe in wasting paint, so I wanna try to use that the best I can. Just make sure that you don't lose detail. That's it, okay? Just a few, few nice little taps there. Maybe a little bit more on the front because we want a, want a few layers. Remember, that's that's how we roll, we roll with airbrushing, guys. It's, uh, it's all layers. Just have to open this window a little bit. So, you know, just streak it on, streak, it, streak the layers on like that. All right, you see how I'm using my brush. And, um, you know, never be tight with the paint, guys, to the point where you risk, like, uh, risk the quality of your model, all right? 
Now, a lot of people will be like, oh man, I'm gonna go full on and like save paint and you know, I'm not gonna do this because saving paint that. Guys, like, what would you rather? Would you, would you rather buy like a new pot of paint for like five bucks or whatever? Um, you know, or would you rather just completely stuff your model and then, you know, have wasted like, you know, for however much your model costs and, uh, and then also your time and effort. I know what I'd rather be doing, I'd just be rather buying another bottle of paint. So, you know, use your discretion, everybody, and just basically see how it is. So, all right, so now that's the base coat. That's gotta go dry, it's probably gonna take about an hour. I'll leave that for an hour. I don't think I'm gonna need any more than that. And then I could come back and I could start doing the, uh, the other layers of the pre-shading, right? So, you know, the base coating is a massive part of it. Uh, so then we're going to go through, we're going to do a, a white layer. Then we're going to come through, we're going to do a, like a sort of grey layer in parts. And then we'll go over it with, a, with another sort of maybe a grey layer. Uh, it's what I call a correction layer. So you basically go in there and you, um, and you correct any parts that don't look quite right. Alright, so that's, that's basically what you do. All right, fantastic guys. Okay, I'm gonna clean the airbrush and uh, let this dry. And I'll pause this video, start the other video, and it should be should be good. Okay. Oh, all right, everybody. <clears throat> now you may notice a lighting change and a camera angle change, and this is because this tutorial has now been resumed about two weeks after I started filming the first half. So I can't even remember the crap that I started finishing in, uh, talking about in the first half. But anyway, we're gonna continue uh, with the pre-shading um, on this tank. All right, so it's gonna be awesome. So the next step is basically, I've got a mixture here of 50-50 white, right, and 50-50 black. Now, you need to go through and you need to decide what mixture is best for you. Right, I'm going pretty dark with this one, right? Because it's just my method. Now it's in a citadel, it's in a citadel container, but it, don't be fooled, there's not citadel paint in there. Just to recap, in case I didn't go in the first video, right? I'm using these two paints. I'm using the Vallejo Negro Black Standard Surface Primer, right? And I'm using the MIG One Shot White Primer, which is, I've also got the black one here. All right, um, I'm thinking about doing another tutorial. It's in my mind. It's gonna be called Speed Batch Painting um, Primaris Marines. And when I do that, I'm gonna be using this primer. This is, this is by far my favorite primer. The stuff just hugs the model. It is like, flows through the airbrush so awesome. It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit too thin for a brush, but for an airbrush, oh, it's, it's, it's just gold. So yeah, so I'm not gonna worry about this. So just remember guys, as we're adding these pre-shading layers, okay, um, we can then do correcting layers. We can then, and we're gonna actually have to do a correction layer, and then we, we put the actual base coat on, right? We can actually go over it a few times and crush it a little bit, right? Balance it out. We can always do stuff like add null oil, extra null oil in areas to help get that gradient. And we can also do stuff like add um, uh, pigments, all right, so uh, uh, pigments and emanuals. All right, so to basically add gradients and things like that to our panels and all this kind of stuff, which um, which we'll be doing. Now, I've got this airbrush here. This is a this is a standard one I'm using. Right, but I, I think for this task, I'm actually going to pull out my big super weapon. Right, my Tamiya. 0.2 nozzle super epic high precision optimus prime mega supreme airbrush all right um so i think that constitutes this now i'm gonna have to thin my paint a little bit more because this airbrush is super epic but it's very it's a very it's more of an advanced airbrush to use everybody um it clogs up very fast if you don't know what you're doing it clogs up very fast if you do know what you're doing um, so you really got to be uh, careful with it, all right? So uh, again, once again, always going to put some put some flow in the in the lid here, all right? In the cup, 
All right, just lubricate that vent a little bit. All right, so, which is, which is pretty awesome. And uh, once, the, once the cup's lubricated a bit, now I can put my paint in. Uh, I think I'm just gonna thin this, this paint down just a tad more. All right, um, it's better that it comes out thin than clog my airbrush at this point in time. And uh, I really recommend, guys, that you check your consistencies before you try any of this. Have a practice, all right, with this pre-shading stuff. You really need to practice. Don't go out on your best model straight away and just start doing it, okay? Um, if, you know, if you're first time doing it, it can, it can take a lot of practice, okay? All right, so fantastic. Now, I don't know what else I was talking about in the other video. I think I was at a wedding show or something at the time of filming, and then I was offered a job at MIT, which I didn't take. Um, so anyway, so now you can see here, I've got this nice milky consistency in my paint. Um, I'm gonna pour that into my cup here, just a little bit, I don't need all too much. Now, very important, everybody. We got the painting technique, but now we got to talk. This is the key. We've got to have a look at where the light is going to hit, all right, on the asset. So the thing is, on the wheels, I'm going to start with the wheels because the wheels are the easiest part to work out, right? We know where the shadows are going to be and everything like that, okay? So have a think about where the shadows might be on your vehicle. Now remember, this vehicle could be a Warhammer vehicle. This is a bolt action vehicle but it might be a, a Warhammer vehicle, right? It's, it's all the same stuff, okay? Um, but just have a think, have a stop to think about where the shadows are gonna be. All right, so I know I'm gonna have shadows in here, I'm gonna have shadows in here, and pretty much all around the rim here is gonna be out of shadow. Now, I don't have my Michael Jackson one glove this time, but I'm just gonna have to make do. All right, so let's, let's, give, this a, let's give this a whirl. All right, so I'm gonna come in here, just check, all right, there we go. Just checking my airbrush flow. All right, so you like, you wanna put the tiniest little bit of pressure on this. Very easy, guys, very easy. Doesn't matter if you make a little mistake here and there, you can come back, fix it up later. Besides, the wheels aren't important at this time. Um, what's important is the top, actually. You come in, just almost just spray air. All right, just see how I'm just highlighting that wheel. The wheels are just popping up a little bit, separating out, okay, from the bit. And then probably that just in here, up the top section. All right, so we can have a look there. You can see that middle wheel now, kind of popping out a little bit like that, but it's still got shadow. So I'm gonna come in there again, and just add a little bit more to it, all right? Now the next one. All right, and then the next one. Now oil will fix this. All right, just in the middle there. All right, and now over this side again. Around the wheel here, around that wheel. All right, now for this, we want the center part to be lit up. Right, and then we want shadow around the rest of it because the, the, tracks, the tracks will be hitting the rest of that cog. Right, so you can see the fall off in the wheels. Right, can everybody see that gradient that's happening there? I can see it. Now, the bigger the model, the easier this is to do. All right, so, now just looking at that, you can see how much depth is in that model already. 
All right, you could you could almost leave this grey without even doing a primer. Sorry, a base coat over the top. Look at the contrast. Look at the contrast. It's like the Star Wars kid. Look at the plastic. Look at the plastic. Like seriously, like it's looking awesome. All right. Um, and again, like it's not you know there are areas that it should be in shadow still, but that's where our null oil comes in. Like you want to compare the two. Big difference, yeah. The top one and the bottom one, massive difference. All right, so we've got to make sure we work fast with this because because we don't want stuff drying up in our in our airbrush, which it looks like I've got a clog already. That didn't take long, guys. I'm just gonna just gonna clean the tip. Like I said, this is a super airbrush, but it's super problems. I have two of these. The um, one of the other ones, I um, I lost down the sink when I was cleaning it, uh, and um, I, it, they said to me I went to get it replaced, and they basically said to me by the time it's going to take you to get the replacement nozzle from China, you may as well just buy a new airbrush. All right, so just going over it. Um, I could turn my air pressure down. Did you probably you probably notice that my air pressure is very hard? But I need it because the model is, um, the nozzle for this airbrush is so thin that if I don't have my air pressure really thick, um, the paint's not gonna come through properly. But like, I've, I've literally painted the shadows of like, of Space Marines with this airbrush. All right, so there we go. There's a second track. Probably it's a little bit more just there. All right, there we go. But look at that gradient, guys. Look at that. Look at that detail. Look at that, look at that, look at that shadow, all right? So that's what we're doing. Now, the idea is, um, you know, on these wheels, we probably don't even need to add white. Okay, so because this is a this is going to be a different lighting style to what I usually do my Warhammer stuff. So, if this was like a Space Marine tank or something, I would be doing a lot of edge highlighting. Okay, now I'm going to do another tutorial um, talking about how you do shading and edge highlighting at the same time, like um, some of my other Marines um, are. But uh, it won't be in this one. A lot of people say like, oh, you you know you can't do it if you. If you do shading, right, you can't edge highlight. It's absolute rubbish. You totally can edge the highlight. You just got to know what color it is that you have to knock it back down with. All right. Now the panels, right? So these panels, um, like I said, I will go into, once we get these panels done, I will go into the, uh, the lighting later. All right. So hopefully you can see that there. Now with this, I just want to come out far and just start adding a nice little gradient to it. I might just give myself a little bit of extra nozzle strength there. Alright, so if you see that, I'll just zoom in there for you. See that? See that shadow guys? See that gradient? All right, that was a, that was a stuff up. That was a big mistake. It came out too strong. So I'm just going to get a little cloth and I'm just going to just dab it, dab it down. Right? Not a massive deal there, guys. That can be fixed. Uh, but just need to be just need to be careful of that. Okay. 
So you, your best bet, if that happens to you, just leave it. Just leave it, right? Um, don't try to like scrape it off or do anything with it um, because it'll just stuff it up. Just go over a little bit now. Because remember, if like, as long as you don't stuff the texture of the of the model, right? You can come over it with, you can correct it, and no one's going to know the difference. But the minute you start altering the actual texture of the model, you're going to start to have problems. All right. So that's that panel done. I'll leave that there. We we'll start on the other panel. All right. We can we can just get a corrective layer and uh, and go over that one anyway. All right, let's just keep it nice and even. Rocking back and forth, just looking for that gradient. Nice and slow, guys. Just brush control, smooth criminal. Just try to keep the panels as consistent as you can. All right. All right, so that'll do for now. And as you can see, once once it's done, it's it's actually fine. Like, you know, you just, we just crush that back down. I'll go over that later with a tiny little bit of black and we won't even notice it, okay? But um, yeah, and I'm gonna put scratches and all that. There's gonna be, so guys, you gotta remember, there's gonna be camo and stuff going on, on the top of this as well, and a whole base coat, all right. So now here, we're gonna think about the shadows, right? So where are the shadows gonna be, right? This is the back of the tank, right? The exhaust, the fuselage, fuselage. So that's easy. I'm just gonna spray from this direction up where the lighting would be hitting it. Just in a nice little even straight line. All right, that's gonna help us to keep the shadows. All right, and we start to get a nice feathered gradient on the back there. All right, so see how it's darker down the bottom than what it is up the top? All right, that's what we want. Don't worry about down here because, um, because the wheels are gonna be covering that. That's not even an issue. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the back here. Now, the way it's gonna work is, um, this section, it's gonna be, the light again is gonna be here from above. So, what I'm going to need to do, now if it was edge highlighting, it would be different. I would go around the side and work my way up. But because this is realistic lighting, because my bolt action are realistic, I'm just going to come in just a little bit on the tip. Like that. Alright? And as I said, don't worry if it's, if it's harsh, because we want it to be harsh, because it's going to, we're going to be putting another layer on this, guys. All right, but you can see my fall off there. That's the gradient that you want. All right, this is gonna look really good. You can see here, if I get my, if I get my wheels now and I put it on the, on the actual tank, right, you can see it start to come together, okay? All right, now this is the important part super important part now to do this what I want to do I can either do it with the turret on or off I do it with the turret off okay because I want to get control okay so all right so let's think about it what areas are in shadow this area is in shadow so it's gonna stay black right so remember this is your mid-tone it's not your highlight people all right so I'm just gonna start off from way back here all right, very lightly. Just start to paint like a little circle around. All right, where the light would be. 
So again on the sides too. You can follow this corner all the way up. And just build it. Right, can you just see that? Sweet. Alright, I'm gonna do this side. Be careful because there's a bit of shadow there. But again, it doesn't matter, right? If we stuff it up, just now oil it. So like, you gotta be careful, okay? But you don't wanna be too careful, all right? Because it's like Han Solo, right? Just fly casual, all right? You wanna be careful so that, you know, you do a good job, but if you're too careful, you'll actually stuff it up. All right, so I want a little bit of a, in here, just little circles, guys. All right, and then up here. Little circles. Little circles on the corners. All right, anywhere where the light might hit. So right along that side there. All right, and then especially we go to the front. Here on the corners. Just imagine the sun's hitting the corner there. And the rest will fall off by itself. All right, and a little bit up top here, because we need that up top. All right, on, the, on these corners. All right, and then up here, just on the front of the tank. Okay, and then probably a little bit here, a little bit here. All right, let's have a look. All right, it's looking pretty all right. We will have to do a corrective layer, but that's life, okay? Now with the turret, with the turret, this is pretty easy. Most of this is gonna be gray because this is what the sun's gonna be hitting the most. A lot of this will actually be white. So, I'm just gonna come through now and just hit the top of it but just leave a little bit of shadow um, in the sides there near the turret joints. All right, so hopefully you can see that. All right, so you just need to like leave a little bit of right here. All right, near the turret joints. So I'll go again and just tap it in. Just tap it in along the, along the turret. All right, and then you can hit the front of the nozzle All right, use the ground if you need to, to brace it. All right, there you go. Now, once again, um, we're gonna attack the, the top part because that's where the light will be coming from. Spray the corners first because that's where the areas are gonna be most dense. And then the top. Keeping that bottom area up in shadow. All right, and then again, so this is gonna be uh, the sides here. All right, and you can see that contrast coming up. Don't forget to layer it on, guys. You gotta layer. All right, and then just up top here. Leaving some shadow area where the gun would be and the hatch. Right, and then we just wanna be just carefully just get a little bit of that hatch. All right, cool. So that should do us for that section. 
Uh, I still got a little bit of paint left, but I think it's good. I'm just going to check the model now. So I'm going to go over. It doesn't matter if it's... With this tank, I'm manhandling it because, like, usually you wouldn't because, um, you know, you wouldn't want the paint to come off. But because I'm going to, like, scrape the living crap out of this tank anyway, um, it doesn't really matter, right? Because it's going to be a lot of battle damage, all right? So let's start to put this guy together. All right, and we can sort of start to see how it's how it's coming along. I'll just zoom in a little bit there. All right, and um, and then with the with the side parts as well. That's where it's really going to pop. Hopefully, I can get that up there. All right, it's not going to let me do it. All right, there we go. All right, so you can see here, right, we've got the shadows between the vents and everything there. We've got a natural shadow happening under this part. All right, I'm going to have to do a little bit work of work here. I went a little bit too hardcore on it, but that's fine. Um, that's why we have our corrective layers. Um, so I'm just going to empty this back up in here. All right, I'm going to give my, give my airbrush a bit of a flush, but I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Because, um, because the next the next level is going to be white anyway, and because we're working our way up on the spectrum, um, the white will just mix in with the grey anyway. All right, so cool. So I'm going to put this white in now. It doesn't take much for this white because it's very, very, very slippery and runny because it's the airbrush paint, paint. So it really doesn't take much for this white to come out. So I've got to be very, very careful. The tiniest little precisions. All right, so while my paint is new, I'm going to do that, the most important areas first. All right, so just at the tip guys where the light would be the most abundant so up here on the sides oh man that's stuck up no that's still okay actually Alright, can you see that nice blend I'm getting there, guys? Along here. Notice the way I'm holding the model, alright? Along this edge. Yeah. It's doing its thing. A little bit up the top here. All right, so that nice little white spot there. I've got shadows as well. All right, up the top here like this. All right. Cool, and then on the back. Get a little bit more flow. Let me try clean the tip. Yep, so the, the tip is, is gunked. Uh, you probably can't see it now because of 
cleaned it, but um, the tip gunks up pretty hard. So it's just, just what it's about with the high precision, guys. You gotta remember, this tank. Is a, it's still a very, very small tank. All right, it's not a big tank. All right, just getting a little bit of fall off here on the turret. Again, use the... Bit too much, it's okay. Now oil fixes everything, guys. All right, but it's looking good. Oh, on the back here. Oh, actually, no, that's fine. The light would hit it that way. All right, so now this top part. So just gonna do the highlights, okay, of the top part. Follow that edge along. Like another jam. Yeah, this thing, this thing will jam up very. All right. So yeah, this thing will jam up very often, guys. But um, it's all right. Just make sure thin that paint. Sorry to sound like Duncan, but it actually matters here. So just doing these tips. You come up a bit and just pull out as you're coming up. All right, give you that really nice gradient. See that, everybody? All right, it doesn't matter if the whites are stark. You want it to pop out. Remember, you're putting another layer on top of this later, all right? You just, what we're doing, we're creating a gradient. Okay, um, as long as it's, the gradient is following where the light is gonna hit. Uh, and then, so these these hatches, we want to do these hatches. A little bit up here too. A little bit on the side. Come up, just spray there, just spray there. Just get that grade in there. Okay, looks like I'm out of paint now. Tiny little bit. Guys, once again, remember, thin those paints. This, this paint is very thin. All right, build that up. All right, we want to keep that dark rim around the side. I'm going to come back and correct that. All right, but that's that's about right. And maybe a little bit here. There'd be shadow here. Sorry, light here. Okay, 
Alright, so that's that's the hard parts done. Oh, actually no, it's not. The hardest part's still coming up. That's these things. So, we'll let that dry. Alright, I think it's looking pretty alright so far. Um, alright, now this is going to be very careful. We just want the tiniest little spray from far off. All right, change the battery, all right. So yeah, uh, just get this top wheel. I did a bit of a boo-boo there, but that's all right. I'll fix that later. All right, so just this top wheel. All Alright, so the biggest issue is there is the contrast doesn't match. Right, so that wheel is, is more stark than those wheels. I have to fix that. It's because I wasn't concentrating because I was changing the... That wheel's alright. Less, less talk, more painting. Alright, so, if you can see that, the focus on this camera is absolutely appalling. It's just that I don't want to use my good camera up because I don't want to get paint on it. That's the only problem. So, alright, let's try that again. There we go, that's better. Alright, so it's not bad. It's a bit stark on the end there, but otherwise it's pretty good. Um, that's not bad. That wheel up the front is a bit of a stuff up on there. See how it sort of goes across. But it's not the end of the world. Like I said, corrective layers, guys. Corrective layers, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Alright, this is going to be probably the hardest part now, these panels. Um, let's have a look. So just hold him here. Now, I've got to work out, it's very important, where the top is going to be, because the top is going to be hitting with light. So I think it would be this way. No, it would be this way. Alright, I've got to try to work this out here, because... Yeah, so it'd be something like that. So light would be just hitting the tip of it. So it would go something like this. It's all about the angle, guys. Work that angle. All right, so something like that. Okay, and then maybe I just want a little bit in the middle of each. Locked again. Thing is, I can't, I can't thin this paint down anymore because it's just, it's going to get too sloppy if um. All right, and then you can see this white is actually fixing our problem with that that we had before with that that gradient problem like where there's that blotch of paint where I made the mistake so like I said it's not it's you can you can fix this but it's just becomes tricky that's all all right pretty decent job there as well Remember, the rest of it will be enamels, right? Pigments, weathering enamels, all right? So you can always come in and fix it like that. And I've got to hit the top. Keep that angle. All right, now. 
Now! Oh, okay, we're just going to balance this out a bit, so just from the top of the back here. I want to get a lot of light on there. So essentially what you're doing here, guys, you're... You're painting light. Essentially. Alright, you're painting light. Um, individual effects. I know I've got some of my... My visual effects friends on there. Um, one of my teachers on there as well, Danny. Uh, I won't say your last name, Danny, because of confidentiality reasons, obviously. But he's pretty epic, and uh, it was one of uh, probably the best ever art teacher I ever had, and I've or ever done anything with. And like I, I've worked with a lot of people and been taught by a lot of people. So, um, hey, Danny, how you going? I noticed you subscribed to the channel, mate. Many thanks. And um, Last Jedi was crap. Sorry, man, if you worked on it. But <laughs> so, uh, the visual effects were good, but yeah, anyway, 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 I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. Relax. Relax, man. All right. It's, don't be triggered. All right. So, um, so, yeah, hopefully you can get a bit of a perspective on how this has sort of come together and how it will look. Now, I'll show I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a close up on the camera later. All right, I'm just having a quick look. I'm, I'm happy with it, all right? So, but I am gonna come through. I'm gonna do some corrective layers now. So I'm just gonna check it to make sure I'm good. Yeah, all the areas that are, all the shading is good. Uh, probably maybe a little bit more white here, actually, just on the tip here. Just on that side part, maybe here. Aside from that is good. Uh, maybe just a little bit here. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to come in. We're going to bring our. Uh, we're going to bring the grey back. Uh, actually, not the grey. Sorry. We're just going to go black. And I'm going to. I'm going to crush it down. Right. We're going to. We're going to crush those blacks. And I'm going to anywhere that like there's not enough shadow, like around the turret area, or like. Um, maybe like here in, the, in these little corners of the side grill or like here where I went a bit too crazy we're gonna come back into it uh, oh, oh hang on a minute needs to be some white there and I've just I've put a bit too much but but that's all right I'll I'll come in and I'll correct that all right Cool. Once again, you don't have to worry about cleaning the brush too much because I'm going to be putting black in and that's going to supersede the white, all right? Just to give you a bit of a perspective how it's looking so far. Um, I'm just going to bring this guy up to the front of the camera so you can see some of that nice gradient we're getting in there. See that, guys? See that? That's, that's Professor Steve right there, all right? All right, now mind you, this isn't even the base coat yet. This is just a pre-shading. All right, you wait till I get weathering enamels on this. You wait till I get this shading. You get to wait, get the null oil, I get the camo. All right, so, and remember that you can do this with Imperial Guard vehicles, Space Marine vehicles, whatever you want, all right? All right, lads, we're back. Um, okay, so I'll be honest with you guys. I reckon we could probably even leave it there. Um, I reckon I might have missed. Oh crap! That's not good. Nothing broke. How durable are these bolt action things? That's all right. No, that's fine. We can put some mud over that or something. Okay. So I'm having a look at the model, and it actually came out better than what I thought, which is pretty good. Um, I don't actually think it even needs a corrective layer. Like if you look at that contrast, guys. Um, it's it's pretty good right remember this is just to create the gradient right I'll take some photos of it now I am gonna come in here despite the fact that it's I think it's looking like really good I am gonna come in here and do it a little bit all right so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of gradient don't tell me I, I, I did this the wrong way. Nah, it's the right way. It's okay. 
So, yeah, I will come in here. I will do a little bit of crushing, uh, just on certain areas. Hello? There we go. So just on certain areas, right, like the wheel, like this wheel I stuffed up here, right, but nothing, nothing too, too dramatic guys, all right, because, because it's looking good, all right, and sometimes you just got to know when to pull back or you get, or you could stuff it up. All right, remember there's going to be a shade going over this anyway. Uh, a base coat, camouflage, enamels, washers. Right, so really, it really doesn't need too much, too much, too much work here. But I'm going to come in, I'm going to do it anyway. Now, this is where I have to be super careful. Before, it didn't matter too much, right? Because, you know, as you can see, it crushinated itself back down. But now, this is very tricky because, because I don't want to come in for a third time. Right? So I'll start with this area. This is going to be my most challenging part. Always start spraying off the, off the unit and then come onto it. All right, so you can see what I've done there. I've just added a tiny little bit of a, a black gradient there where the shadow would be, all right? Don't worry about the pop rivets and stuff because that's where... That's where your null oil is gonna come in. All right, you see that? Nice and precise. All right. Doesn't have to be perfect here, people. All right, we're talking about a World War II tank. Grime isn't even. Clog. Just clean your tip. Doesn't matter, it can be a little bit charred. Alright, next one. That's oh, the same one. Where'd I put that other piece? will have mud on it anyway. Alright. Now the wheel, which is the most important part. I went a bit too far that time. I'm going to have to come back again. 
I've stuffed a few parts. So I'm sorry about that guys, but you gotta remember I'm operating a camera here, talking at the same time. Usually, usually I just have to worry about painting, you know? So, but it's, it's a lot more challenging. Anyone who's ever done it will be able to tell you. It's a lot more challenging than just painting. So I'm just going in there, just filling in some of these shadowed areas. Adding a little bit of contrast there. Remember, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna come back into this. Often you have to anyway, guys, to be honest. It's kind of just like, you know, if you don't want to, but this, this is kind of the gradient that you want to get. Anyway, so. I'm still happy with the way this is coming out. And I will I will come in with a, with a with a gray pass after this. So that's that area done, it's good. And now I'm just gonna just come along here. Just add some some blacks. Just on this extreme lower part here. In the middle there, in the middle there, in this area between the turret. All right, I'll be coming back there, and it, a little bit more in here. But again, don't worry too much. Because these finer areas, we're going to be doing no oil. All right, and then you know under there, that's fine. Um, no, that's fine. Just trying to think, guys. Uh, I think that's that's pretty fine. Maybe it's under here. There'll be a lot of shadow under there. Um, that's good. That's good. It's good. This wheel. Ah, uh, I'll just mute this this wheel down a bit. Clog, clean the tip. All right, cool, 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 cool. Um, so right, I'm gonna come in now. Probably that's fine. I don't care about the bottom, but I might just, I might. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna come back in here anyway, guys, so... Fix that up, all right. All right, that's that's a little bit better where we wanted it. I'm gonna show you that. So now our shadow areas are a lot more pronounced. Right, so if you have a look here, you can see here we've got shadowed areas. Uh, I can see on the camera, I'm gonna need a bit more just here. Hang on. Yeah, just in that, just in that black part there, we want that black because it's, it's going to be black, right? Um, that'll dry them. We're going to go over it anyway. I'm going to, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do a very, very. I'm going to do another white pass. I think maybe white or grey. Hmm. I think I'll go with grey, guys, just to do some corrections. I think white. I think white is going to be the way it is because it's going to take little bits, and if. The gray, if I'm very subtle with it, the gray going over the white 
will actually will actually help me to fix a lot of that up. But I have to be careful. This is very common, everybody. Um, it's often common. You got to come back and do it, do correction layers. Um, you know, yeah. It just depends how much time you want to kind of put in. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and. But as you can see, this is looking pretty good. I just think I went a little bit too far on those edges at some points. That's more like it. Have a squeeze. All right. And then down the bottom here, just down here, I think I... Just went a little bit too far. Key is with this, guys. You do little circles. And then you just work your way out to the side. Right, you see here now, it's well worth me doing this correction layer. All right, it's just making it even more awesome. So I'm just gonna come in the wheel. That wheel's all right. That, all the other wheels are fine actually on there. I'm leaving the wheels, because the leak wheels are on the side anyway, so who cares. Um, now, just this top part. I just went a bit too far without black. So I just want to smooth that in a little bit there like I have. Right, just get that little bit of smooth gradient there. Uh, also at the top here, I really should mask this off, but I'm not going to bother with it. All right, that's looking that's looking plush now. Bit from the side, bit from this side. All right, wonderful. Bit more up here. Bit more white up here. Back's looking good. All right, happy. Happy chappy. Top, very important part. The back's fine. So I just want to go fix some of these areas where... I just want to smooth some of this out. I don't want any of that spot and dot crap in here. I can't stand spot and dot airbrushes. We want those smooth transitions. All right, I think we're good. Maybe a little bit more side here. Just a touch. Uh, and uh, also, while I'm here, that area I forgot about before. Just like that. It's got to match the top area. Alright. Alright, everybody. That is it. Oh, and the antenna. Even though that's going to snap off anyway. But Oh, no, the antenna's going to be black. What am I talking about? So I don't need to pre-shade it. It's going to be black, though. So uh, what I'll do, I'll put this tank together and I'll put it on the turntable and I'll do a I'll do a final a final inspection of it. Just doing a little bit of a check around the model now. Making sure my transitions are smooth. I want cream. I'm on YouTube here. I'm I'm in front of the world. 
It's got to be good, or at least half decent. All right. All right, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this guy together. All right. Uh, you can see a little bit of him there. He's looking good. The pre-shading's looking good, guys. Um, it actually looks way better than it does on camera, as always. All right. Now, just remember, we're gonna be. This is just the pre-shading layer. There's gonna be base coat and all the other stuff. We haven't even done the base coat yet. Okay. Alright, look how precise those panels are, people. Now, I've seen some attempts on YouTube at the bolt action painting, but I don't know, guys, I'm, I'm not, I don't have an ego. But I reckon we did alright here. Alright, everybody, fantastic. So, look, I'm going to um, take an, just a quick uh, turntable of this model. Uh, if you've liked what you've seen in the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Remember, prize draw this Sunday um, for 600 subscribers. And I hope to see you there, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, you know, this is Steve. I'm Steve for Command Center Wargaming. Um, you know, keep rolling, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Fantastic.